Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. Um, just sharing with you uh, concerning this catechism, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, so we're going to read from that and uh, read uh, some scriptures from Psalm 119 and uh, so let's pray. Father we thank you for this day and uh, Father we thank you for your love and your grace and we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for your encouragement we thank you for your strength and uh, Father we thank you for your love and your grace and Father I just pray that this video uh, would be a blessing to people and I just pray that it would minister grace and life and uh, Father it would build people up in their faith in Jesus name Amen Amen. Don't forget, uh, you can go on my Facebook. There you'll see videos by people like preachers like Alistair Begg. Uh, you can also go on my uh, Twitter where I make comments about uh, various um, things that are happening in the world. And I put a lot of apologetic videos up there uh, on defending the faith by various uh, debaters and uh, Christian apologists like uh, William Lane Craig or uh, Ravi Zacharias and people like that. Uh, and then also my website, uh, there's over a hundred pages there where you can download books and um, you can listen to videos on various topics uh, by uh, pastors and, and preachers. Uh, so in this video, uh, I just want to build you up a bit, encourage you in the Word of God. Um, <clears throat> it's good to have... Um, th this video is, is for non-Christians. If you're not a Christian, I know that, that there are a lot of young people that go onto my YouTube channel. Um, so uh, many of you don't know the Lord. Um, so this video is for you. you we're going to look at the Shorter Catechism. And this is a really good synopsis of the Christian faith. So if you're a non-Christian, this is going to be good for you. But also if you're a Christian, um, going through this catechism will strengthen your faith and really build you up in the faith. It's good uh, to have a good knowledge of, of what the scriptures teach about various topics. And this is a good summary of the Christian faith. Um, this is the shorter version of this, the Westminster Confession. Now, if you're a Christian preacher, if you're a leader uh, in the church, um, if you're a Christian who wants to really, really grow, I'd encourage you to get a copy of this. Uh, this is published by um, the Free Presbyterian Publication. And it, it, it's basically the Westminster Confession, and then it's got all the scriptural references. And it's just very edifying and very, very helpful to your faith. And I, I keep reading it every, every morning, and uh, it just keeps me grounded in, in, in the truth, really. And the more I go on in the, in the last couple of months, the more I'm going on, the more I'm valuing the riches of, of, the, of these confessions and of this confession. Uh, you might not agree with everything in it, but you'll, you'll be built up and you'll be encouraged and you'll be strengthened in your faith. And um, these people were very uh, spiritually minded, very biblical pastors, and so they'll, they'll be, it'll be a great help to you if you get a bigger copy. Whether you're Pentecostal, Arminian, Baptist, Calvinist, whether you're charismatic, whether you're Methodist, whatever your spectrum of theology, uh, Zionist, uh, whatever, reading this will richly bless you. Uh, like I said, you might not agree with everything, but you'll be blessed because it'll challenge you to go to the scripture and to study. You cannot get a better compendium or overview of Christian theology than the Westminster Confession, okay? Um, so, so, the shorter catechism is the shorter version of the Westminster. 
So we're going to read some of the shorter catechism and I'm going to read uh, some, uh, some verses from Psalm 119. So first question, what is the chief end of man? Now as I read this, what I would encourage you to do if you're a Christian, stop the video and look up the verses and meditate and just pray over the verses. So don't just rush this video, just use it as a, as a means of meditation. Okay, those who are non Christians just listen to it and you'll get a, a general bird's eye view of what the Bible teaches. Those who are Christians, stop the video from time to time, look at the verses yourself, get your Bible out and read the verses yourself and meditate on them and pray over them. So, so that's what this video is about, really, it's providing you with a, uh, a resource to meditate on the Word of God. So first question, what is the chief end of man? Reply, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Psalm 73 verse 25 to 26 Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Question 2. What rule of God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? Answer. The word of God which is contained in scripture of the Old and New Testament is the only rule to direct us how we might glorify and enjoy him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 3 That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Question 3. What do the scriptures principally teach? The scriptures principally teach that man is to believe concerning God. Sorry, the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God. And what duty God requires of man. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Question 4. What is God? God, answer, God is spirit, infinite, eternal, unchangeable, in his being, wisdom, power and holiness, and justice, goodness and truth. John 4, 24. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Job chapter 11 verse 7, Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. James 1 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Exodus 3.14 And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. <clears throat> and he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Psalm 147.5 Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Revelation 4.8 Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is to come. Revelation 15.4 who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and, and glorify thy name? For thou, won't, thou own, only art holy. Exodus 34, 6-7 And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, 
that will by no means clear the guilty. Question 5. Are there more gods than one? Answer, there is but only the living and true God. There is but one only the living and true God. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is our Lord. Jeremiah 10.10 10, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. Question 6 How many persons are there in the Godhead? Answer, there are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one God, the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, Go ye therefore and teach all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Question 7. What are the decrees of God? The decree of God are his eternal purpose according to the counsel of his will, whereby for his own glory he hath foreordained whatsoever come to pass. Ephesians chapter 1, 11 to 12. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory. Question 8. How does God execute his decrees? Answer, God executeth his decrees in the works of creation and providence. Revelation 4.11 Thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are, they are and were created. Daniel 4.35 He doth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. Question 9. What is the work of creation? The work of creation is God making all things for nothing by the word of his power in the space of six days and all very good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 1 uh, Hebrews 11 3 Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are, are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. Genesis 1.31 And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. I'm just going to get some water, and I'll be back in a second. How did God create man? God created man male and female after his own image in knowledge, righteousness and holiness with dominion over the creatures. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man to his own image and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. Colossians chapter 3 10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, Ephesians 4.14, that you put on the, the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Genesis chapter 1.28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living creature that moveth upon the earth. Question 11. What are God's works of providence? Answer. God's works of providence are his most high, holy, wise, and powerful preserving and governing all his creatures and all their actions. Psalm 145 verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Isaiah 28, 29. This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 upholding all things by the word of his power. 
Psalm 103 verse 19, The Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Matthew 10 29, Are not two sparrows sold for farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without, without your father. Question 12. What spe special act of providence did God exercise towards man in the, estate, in the estate wherein he was created? Answer. When God had created man, he entered into a covenant of life with him upon condition of perfect obedience, forbidding him to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil upon the pain of death. Galatians chapter 3 verse 12 And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live, live in them. Genesis 2 7, 17 But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou shalt eat thereof thou shalt surely die. Question 13 Did our first parents continue in the estate wherein they were created? Answer our first parents, being left to the freedom of their own will, fell from the estate wherein they were created by sinning against God. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29, God had made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Question 14, what is sin? Sin is any want of conformity unto the or transgression of the law of God. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Question 15. What, are, what was the sin whereby, whereby our first parents fell from the instead wherein they were created? Answer. The sin wherein our first parents fell from the estate wherein they were created was their eating the forbidden fruit. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 to 8. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Question 16. Did all mankind fall in Adam's first transgression? Answer. The covenant being made with Adam not only for himself but for all his posterity. All mankind descending from him by ordinary generation sinned in him and fell with him in his transgression. Genesis 1 28 and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die Romans chapter 5 verse 18 by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Question 17. Into what estate did the fall bring mankind? The fall brought mankind into an estate of sin and misery. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. By one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all, that all have sinned. Question 18. Wherein consists the sinfulness of the estate wherein man fell? The sinfulness of the estate wherein man fell consists in the guilt of Adam's first sin, the want of original righteousness, and the corruption of his own na whole nature, which is commonly called original sin, together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 By one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Romans 3.10 There is none righteous, no, not one. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Psalm 51 verse 5 Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Matthew fifteen nineteen to 20 For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Question 19 What is the misery of the estate wherein man fell? 
and so all mankind by their, fo their fall lost communion with God are under his wrath and curse and so made liable to all the miseries of this life to death itself and to the pains of hell forever. Genesis 3 verse 8 to 24 and 24 And they heard the voice of the Lord God calling in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife laid themselves from the present hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the of the garden so he drove out the man Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 and were by nature the children of wrath even as are others Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 Cursed is everyone that continued not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Matthew 25, 41, then shall he say also unto them that on the left hand depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Question 20. Did God leave all mankind to perish? In the estate of sin and misery, God, out of, his, out of his mere good pleasure from all eternity, elected some to everlasting life, did enter into a covenant of grace to deliver them out of the estate of sin and misery, to bring them into an estate of salvation by a Redeemer. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Romans chapter 3, 21, 22, but now the righteousness of God Without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto one upon all them that believe. Question 21. Who is the Redeemer of God's elect? Answer. The only Redeemer of God's elect is the Lord Jesus Christ, who being the eternal Son of God, became man, and so was and continued to be God-man in two natures, and one person forever. God and man in two distinct natures, and one person forever. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Romans 9 5, Whose are the fathers of whom are concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless it forever, amen. In Hebrews chapter 7, 14, But this man, because he continued ever, have an unchangeable priesthood. Question 23. How did Christ, being the Son of God, become man? Answer. Christ, the Son of God, became man by taking to himself a true body and a reasonable soul, being conceived, being conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and born of her, yet without sin. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Matthew 26 38 Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And Luke chapter 1 verse 30, 31 to 35 and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also uh, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26, Such a high priest became, became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners and it's, it's uh, so rich here on on the Christology um, I'll just read verse 20 uh, question 23 what offices doth Christ execute as our Redeemer and so Christ is our Redeemer executed the office of a prophet of a priest of a king both in his estate and humiliation and exaltation Acts chapter 3 verse 32, Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Hebrews chapter 5 6, And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And Psalm chapter 2 verse 6, You have I set 
Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So we've got up to 23. I might read some more uh, next week. But uh, basically you get the picture. Um, questions and answers and then the scriptures. And if you meditate on it. What I do is I, I meditate on this in the morning. I have my Bible reading. I, I read a chapter of the Bible. A couple of chapters of the Bible. But then I, I, I kind of just read a little bit of this. And I just meditate on it. And um, it just builds you up with truth. And it, it's really helpful. So um, yeah. Uh, some people think that. Having a confession. Or believing a confession is like um, it's kind of like law. It's not. It's not of the Holy Spirit. It's not bringing life. And um, in in a way, if you're not trusting the Scripture uh, and resting in the Holy Spirit, it will be law. It will. It won't edify you if you're not resting in the Holy Spirit, believing in the Holy Spirit to teach you the Word of God. So there is a truth to that. But all the confession is, and the confessions, not just the Westminster Confession, but there are other confessions, the Heidelberg Confession, the 1689 Baptist Confession, uh, the, I think it's the 39 Articles of the Church of England. These confessions are written by theologians and pastors that knew the Word of God. And they're just saturated in the Word of God. And they just place things in an easy way for you to read and understand. And um, they'll strengthen your faith. Like I said, you might not agree with everything. You know, you might not agree with everything. But I guarantee that if you read the confession and study it prayerfully in the Holy Spirit you'll get blessing. Even if you disagree, it will force you to go back to the Bible and study the Bible, and you'll be stronger for it. Uh, but this is the finest expression of, of, of the Christian faith uh, in modern times. It is so clear and crystal clear, the Shorter Catechism. Uh, and this is a real treasure trove of uh, biblical truth that you'll, that, that you'll grow uh, in leaps and bounds in your Christian faith. Uh, reading the Westminster Confession so so I just read a few questions just to get your mind into it and to get you into it you can get this from the Banner of Truth published by the Banner of Truth for the, for, they're about a pound or 75p uh, buy yourself a copy or if you if you google uh, Shorter Catechism PDF you'll be able to get that and you can just read it um, you won't get it from the Banner of Truth if you do PDF on Google, but you'll get an old copy and you can read it. Um, or buy a copy uh, and have it in your Bible and, and meditate on it. It's really helpful. I once did a Bible study through this once uh, with people who didn't have any Christian background. And I used uh, Thomas Watson's body of divinity to understand this more because he's expounding this and it was really helpful and people really enjoyed it um, and found it a blessing and that was many many years ago um, so it's really really good and uh, get yourself a copy of this and uh, just you can get it on the computer just google uh, PDF Westminster Confession with scriptural uh, proofs uh, and just just meditate on it and read it. That's what I've been doing um, recently, especially. I've just been um, it, I've been meditating on the first chapter for like nearly a week. I've just been meditating on it. It's, there's so much material there to meditate on and to think about. Um, and it just builds you up, it builds your faith, and it strengthens your faith. And uh, so, yeah. So I'm not only about sort of evangelizing, but I like to do apologetics. I like to teach the Bible, but I also like to teach theology as well, you know. 
And uh, like I said, you don't have to agree with everything. You, you can be a charismatic and read this and you might not agree with everything, but I guarantee you'll be blessed. You might be an Arminian and you, you're you against Calvinism, but I, I guarantee if you read this, you'll still be blessed. Because most of it you'll agree with, actually. You'll, you'll agree with all that he says about the deity of Christ. You'll agree, uh, you'll actually agree with quite a lot, uh, even if you're an Arminian. <laughs> um, and if you're a Baptist, a Reformed Baptist, you'll definitely agree with most of it, not all of it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm basically doing this video, I just, want, I just want to encourage you to read some good books. Uh, and the, these are good resources to read and meditate on and, and they'll build you up. So I'm going to read uh, a few verses from Psalm 119. Uh, it doesn't matter what age you are, you can be 15 and, or you can be in your 60s, you'll still get a blessing out of that. And it doesn't matter what tradition you're from, especially church leaders, you read this regularly, it will put iron into your soul and strengthen your faith. And that's what I'm going to be doing most of the time in the next few weeks. I'm going to be spending a lot of time reading this kind of material and getting myself built up. And um, I hope that you do as well. We, we need biblical truth. This age is... is is uh, numbing Christians, it, 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 it's making Christians sleep and we need to be strong in the truth and, uh, and in the word of God so we don't fall asleep in this age. So Psalm 119 uh, verse 97 Oh how I love thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Though through thy commandments as thou made me sorry though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I am more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word I have not departed from thy judgment for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my mouth how sweet are thy words unto my taste ye that sweeter than honey to my mouth through thy precepts I understand I get understanding therefore I hate, hate every false way Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today and we don't want to be bound by rules and regulations. We want to walk in the Spirit, Lord, and be filled with the Spirit and be in the Spirit. But we thank you for, the, for these great men of God, the Westminster Divines and the Puritans and the Reformers, Lord, who, who you used in mighty ways. And the, there is a, a heritage that you've given us, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we draw on that heritage, that we would drink from the great books of the past. And Father, I just pray that as I meditate on your word and as I meditate on these great books in the next few weeks myself, I just pray that my own faith would grow stronger and stronger. And I just pray for others too, that they would grow stronger in your word and that they would meditate on good solid Christian books like the Westminster Confession and the Shorter Catechism and Thomas Watson's Body of Divinity and Thomas Watson's uh, Ten Commandments. I pray, Father, that, that people would get back to the old paths, get back to your word. And Father, I just pray for all of us that we get strong in your truth, that, Father, we would be strong in your word. And I just pray, Father, that this video, Lord, that it's not much of a video, but I just pray that it might inspire people to, to get hold of a confession and read it, Lord. And, and, and I pray that they just be blessed. 
I pray that they be fed spiritually and strengthened spiritually and built up spiritually, Lord. Uh, and that, Father, they would just be strong in your faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope that's a blessing to you. It might be completely alien to you. You might find this very alien. Especially if you're from a Pentecostal background, you'll find reading the Catechism and talking about the Westminster Confession totally alien. But I guarantee you, if you go back to reading these ancient books, reading the Puritans, reading good, solid Christian literature like that, I guarantee that your faith will be strengthened. And you will not only be a person of the Spirit, but you'll be a person that grows strong in the Word of God. God bless you.